All right, now let's take a look at the memory modules. We'll call that RAM. It's Random Access Memory, which is really just temporary storage for data and instructions as they are being processed by your central processing unit or CPU. Now these are just kind of kept there, these instructions and stuff are just kind of kept there so that they can be quickly reached by the computer's processor when they're needed. Now RAM is much faster to read and write to than the other kinds of storage in a computer such as the hard disk and if you had an old floppy disk or CD-ROM. The data in RAM stays there only as long as the computer is running. That's why it's called temporary. Now if you look at your figure 1-6 here, you'll see that we have this dual inline memory module slots which hold those RAM sticks. And you can see in this figure that we have one stick here, but we have three other available slots of RAM. So these DIMM slots can be used to maximize the amount of RAM or temporary storage on this motherboard. Another item inside the case here are hard drives or other drives. Hard drives, which may also be called hard disk drives or HDDs, there's different types of hard drives. You can see here in figure 1.7 we have a couple different types here. We have a magnetic hard drive, which is on the left, and then we have a solid state hard drive. And then here in our ch picture too, we also have another type of drive, which is just our you know, DVD driver, we can put in DVDs, or if we need to read a DVD, we can walk, you know, get the information from that. If we had a DVD read write, we could also be able to write information to our media that was placed in there. Now our hard drives are different than our RAM that we just looked at a little bit ago because with our hard disk drives or our hard drives we have permanent storage that is held here so if we move something to our hard drive it is permanent there if we shut off our computer the information is still going to be there when we start it up same way with the DVD drive there if we had a, a disk media in there that information would stay there if we wanted to access it again it would not go away after we shut the computer off and turned it back on now it's important to know that all drives in a system are installed in a stack of drive bays at the front of our computer case. On a side note here for the three drives that are listed here on our figure 1-7 here, each of these drives has two connections for cables. The power cable connectors to the power supply and another cable which is used for data connects to the motherboard and we'll see these later on as well. Now let's take a look at our PSU or our power supply unit. Now the power supply unit is usually up in a corner of your computer case typically. And this PSU receives and converts the house current so that the components inside the case can use it. And most power supplies have a dual voltage selector switch on the back of the PSU. And this is where you can switch the input voltage to the power supply from 115 volts, which is typically used here in the U.S., or if you're traveling to other countries, you might need to switch that to the 220 volt on the back of the power supply unit. If you go back to the figure that we looked at earlier that had all the components inside our case, you can see how the power cables connect to the power supply unit and then all those reach out to different devices such as the motherboard, different expansion cards, or some of our uh, hard drives and such. So you can just take a look at those and get familiar with those connectors as well as we're going to explore that a little bit later. So if you have an old computer sitting around, it'd be great to just take off the side or however the cover comes off on your computer and you can take a look at how these power cables are connected from device to the power supply unit. I'll take this point just as a quick little reminder to, if you get a chance, go back and, and really look at and be able to define the following components and discuss how each one of them is used uh, and be able to uh, quickly identify those. So those different components I want you to take a good look at are the the motherboard, the CPU, the heat sink, different expansion cards, memory modules, hard drives, and what we just talked about, the power supply. Now let's take a look at form factors used by computer cases, we'll look at power supplies as well as we will take a look now at the motherboards. So 
The computer case, power supply, and the motherboards must all be compatible, and they must all fit together in some type of interconnecting system in the computer. Now, the standards that describe the size, the screw hole position, shape, and major features of these interconnected components are what we call form factors. Now, for everything to work as it's expected, there must we have a matching form factor for the motherboard, power supply, and the case. And by having all this matching, we ensure that the motherboard is going to fit in the case. The power supply cords to the motherboard are going to provide the correct voltage and have the correct connectors to match the connections on the motherboard. It's also going to make sure that the holes in the motherboard align with the holes in our computer case. And what these will do is these are going to anchor our motherboard to the case so that there's no movement and everything stays securely in place. Also the holes in the case align with ports coming off of your motherboard. Now for some form factors, wires for switches and lights on the front of the case match up with connections on the motherboard. The holes in the power supply align with the holes in the case for anchoring the power supply to the case as well. Now there are two form factors used by most desktop and tower computer cases and power supplies. Those are the ATX and Mini ATX form factor. ATX stands for Advanced Technology Extended and this is the most commonly used form factor today. It is an open, non-proprietary industry specification originally developed way back in 1995 by Intel and then, even though it's gone several revisions since then it's still pretty the most commonly used form factor. Now there are a variety of power connectors for an ATX power supply and you'll see these in your book in figure or table 1-2 and we want to make sure that you look at all of those. Look at being able to identify a 4-pin Molex, an 8-pin auxiliary, a 6-pin PCIe. Make sure you know what a SATA power supply connector is. So if you have a chance to get a good look at a power supply, take a look at what they're connected to, unplug those with the computer off of course, and try to make sure you can identify those easily. These will be tested for on the CompTIA A Plus certification exam. Make sure you can tell which type is used for a floppy drive. Make sure you can identify an 8-pin PCIe, a 24-pin P1, or a 4-pin AUX and be able to identify the difference between the 4-pin and 8-pin. Obviously, you're going to have four more pins. So let's take a look at those connectors now. You can see, we'll start here with the 20-pin P1. And this is the main motherboard power connector used in our very early ATX systems. The next one down is the 24 pin P1 connector. We also call this the 20 plus 4 pin connector. It's probably more commonly known as the 20 plus 4 pin connector. This is your main motherboard power connector that we use today as opposed to the 20 pin P1 connect that we used to use. Now the 20 plus 4 pin P1 connector with 4 pins removed so the connector can fit into a 20 pin P1 motherboard connector. We have a 4 pin auxiliary motherboard connector used for your any type of extra 12 volt power to the processor if that's needed. Next you will see the 8 pin auxiliary motherboard connector. This is used for a 12 volt power to the processor as well, providing more power than the older 4 pin auxiliary connector above. We have another common one here, the 4 pin Molex connector. And this is used for IDE. Data drives. You'll see next we have the 15 pin SATA connector. And you'll see this a lot because you'll probably see most of your disk drives now are your SATA connectors as well as your optical drives. You'll see that we have the 4 pin Burr connector. You probably don't see this being used in a computer, hopefully, that you're using because this was mainly used for floppy disk drives way back. And there are some industries that still require the use of a floppy drive, such as in manufacturing, where they may have some legacy technology that you will still find that you have to have a floppy disk drive for. We have the 6-pin PCIe connector, which provides an extra 12 volts for your high-end video cards using your PCI Express. And the reason that this voltage information is given, in case you're doing some troubleshooting, we'll get into this later, where you need to use your power supply tester or if 
on the other end, if you need to use a multimeter, you might ha need to use that to test your circuitry, making sure that you have the correct amount of power being provided from the power supply to the device. Now for the PCI Express version 2, we have the 8-pin PCI connector, which is also going to be providing that extra 12 volts. And lastly, you can see that we have the 6-pin plus 2-pin PCIe connector used by high-end video cards with the PCIe x16 slot. Get very familiar with those connectors and be able to identify them on site both obviously through a picture as we're being shown here but as well as when you have your case opened up and you're troubleshooting and looking for those connectors. You'll be able to know exactly what they are and what they're used for as well as what type of power should be supplied. You will definitely see questions on your 220-801 exam for being able to know these connectors all listed in this table. As you look here we have some information for you to kind of break down a little bit more of those connectors being used on those ATX boards and you can see that uh, another key point here is that in your system your video cards are going to draw the most power in a system. As you work on other workstations such as a CAD workstation you'll see how important that these video cards power are to the system because as they get these high-end graphics cards there's going to be drawing a lot more power and you need to make sure that you have the correct motherboard correct power supply to be able to provide these the power needed for these high-end video cards now we'll take a look at the micro advanced technology extended factor here and this is a major variation of the ATX and it addresses some technologies that have emerged since the original development back in the 90s for the ATX. This will kind of reduce the overall total cost of the system by reducing the number of expansion slots on the motherboard, reducing the power supplied to the motherboard, and allowing for a much smaller case size. Now with the micro ATX, you're not likely to have a, as many of your extra wires and connectors as you see with the ATX power supply. It's going to use a 24-pin P1 connector in that micro ATX form factor.